Hi, everyone. Welcome back into another episode of Oh Shoot with Cassidy Lynn. I'm today's host, Cassidy Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm My name is Charlie. I'm your host for today. And we have a special guest for today's episode. Her name's Cassidy. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. It's just such an honor to have you out for today's episode. Yeah, I was. I came a really long way for this episode, so I hope it's worth it. Um, this is weird. I've never been a guest on my own podcast. Yeah, well, I mean, we have a lot packed in for today's episode. We're so glad that you could join us. Um, we actually are revisiting one of our favorite series today. It's actually Photographer Horror Stories version 7, 8, 9, 12, 30. I don't even know where we're at in this series, but yeah. we've done quite a few. And you guys keep sent, submitting new stories, so we keep telling them. Yeah, we do. Um, I heard you did a lot of prep for this episode. I did a lot of prep for this episode. Yeah. Like while I was prepping, you sat on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> this is my podcast. <laughs> Leave, Charlie. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Guys, welcome back. Sorry that Charlie like took over like that. He asked to do the intro. I was like, okay, fine. I guess we can see. You can do a little audition. People can sound off in the comments. Let us know what they thought see if you'd be a good host i know i could be a good host really okay the confidence we like that so yeah we're doing another horror stories episode much requested and i mean you guys always have so many stories like there were over 100 stories i only included like maybe 10 but they were all so traumatic um we just got back from our trip to charleston which i talked about last week and literally like we just got back like today like we flew in today so i don't know we can talk about the trip a little bit if you yeah want. let's get into it the trip was awesome well i'm just checking in with the host if that's okay yes totally let's uh that trip to charleston could you dive into it tell me what you thought about the trip and your personal experience with it sure yeah so it was really fun we um i spoke we <laughs> charlie did not speak but charlie was you know the people always like charlie like the attendees love charlie honestly probably more than me um, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah, it was really fun though. We just hung out. Like we were present at the event, but like I would say, like what seventy five percent of the event, we were just chilling, hanging out. So it was just fun to meet everyone. Um, I spoke, and we got to see Charleston. I was shooting for a fun project, a new project that I have probably launching in May. So I was shooting for that. And when I say I, Charlie was shooting. I was just you know she was just out there yeah but it was it was a fun trip it really was and today's our kind of comfy cozy monday episode because like i'm in my full probably editing set charlie's in an oh shoot t-shirt it's our comfy cozy merch you know it's a merch type of night because we're recording this at night but for you guys it could be the day i um, just had to represent i've i've literally had this oh shoot shirt since we started doing merch and I can't bring it, bring myself to get rid of it. I just love it so much. And hopefully if you have yours too, I hope that you enjoy yours as well. I'm so glad you like that merch. Um, the only thing I have to say, like housekeeping wise, is that my oh shoot pop-up party is happening on Thursday this week. And there's still a few tickets left if you guys haven't bought them. Um, it's local to Grand Rapids though, so it's a little tricky if you don't live here. But feel free to fly in. It's going to be lots of fun. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of nervous for it. I don't know. I'm just nervous. I think what I'm most nervous for is like doing the live podcast in person. Um, yeah, I think I'll be okay, but I don't know. It's just nerve wracking. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, I know there's going to be a lot of leg work and different things that on our end we're going to do. Um, we're really trying to make it as best of an experience for the people that come out and join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so I mean, there's things to kind of anticipate and try to think forward to that could be a little stressful at times, but we're really excited to see how it comes together and more so excited to see those of you who are joining us. Yes. So shall we get into some of these stories? Yeah, Unless, let's do it. Do you have anything you want to say? No, I mean, uh, Host. we didn't really talk a ton about photo camp and different things with uh, the yeah, crew, but it's okay. I mean, Charleston was a fantastic time and the people were even better. So there yes. it is. That's all I have to There's say. There's the recap. And actually, it was our first time in Charleston. How would you rate Charleston? That's a tough question. 
Why? You didn't like it? I think the overall feel of the city and the views and the architecture, the history of it is really cool. I just was a little frustrated at how slow everybody drove and how hard it was to get around town. So I'm mostly poking fun. But uh, yeah, I think on, on a, like a scale of t- uh, one out of 10, maybe, I, honestly, it was probably like seven or an eight. Yeah, I would say seven or eight. We didn't stay downtown because it was literally so expensive. Yep. And I'm sure that would have impacted our overall experience. But like... It was so expensive to stay downtown. And also, like, my thing was we were so close to the beach. When you're, like, downtown Charleston, you're walking around all these cute shops. Like, buildings, beautiful, shops, so fun. But, like, you don't even know that you're close to the water. Like, you can't see the water. It's, like, all, like, I don't know, like, such close quarters. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just was, yeah. I mean, it's really pretty, obviously. And I would probably rate it a seven and a half as well. But I just felt like, I don't know. Yeah, it was very hyped up to me and I could see the hype, but it just wasn't 100% there for me. But I will say, okay, maybe it was an eight out of 10 because we did see them filming Outer Banks while we were there. Yes, we saw John B's van. We saw his van. So we like the big rolling turd. (laughs) We is that what it's called? Yeah, that's what they call it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So not to be confused with RV and uh yeah. What's his face? Anyway, so we were we basically like drove by. Charlie saw the van, and then we literally did like laps around the block for like twenty minutes, just trying to like see something. We didn't end up like seeing any cast members or anything, but there were like a bunch of girls like sitting, lined up, kind of just waiting for something to happen. And there were cops everywhere, so they definitely were filming. It was very exciting to just see that filming was happening. But that did that does bump up my rating a little bit because I do love. You know, when something exciting is happening in the city. You know? It was pretty cool. We ended up, like she mentioned, we drove around the block a few times and we kind of zeroed in. They were in this kind of crazy little compact graveyard that was fenced off and nestled in between all of these different buildings downtown. So I'm I'm assuming it's going to be a pretty sweet or pretty cool. I mean, maybe a little scary, but who knows? It's going to be a cool scene to see when it comes out. Yes. So let's get into the stories. Yeah, without further ado, let's get into our first photography horror story. And as a good host, I will go first and allow you to sit back and relax. Okay, sure. Or maybe not relax, depending on the story. Okay, I can relax. I am able to relax, for sure. I'm the most relaxed person that there is. The more you have to explain it, the less we believe you. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Here's the first one. During an engagement session... A couple requested if I could play music. I didn't really have a playlist ready to go since I don't normally play music during my sessions. So they requested R&B. So I put on a random playlist on Spotify they they have on the recommendations. And everything was fine until a song called I Should Have Cheated came on. (laughs) I was so embarrassed and felt so bad because I didn't even notice until it was a little mid-song already. Way to set the mood for the uh, session. Yeah. And then, like, what do, you, what do you do? Do you skip the song? Do you ignore it? Do you make a joke? Like, I think I would probably make a joke. I think you make a joke and then you also skip, skip it. Skip it. Yeah. I mean, is there a song about cheating that's kind of like a vibe? I don't know. I feel like some, you know, I feel like some, like, <laughs> revenge songs are kind of, like, poppy and, like, fun. Even though they're talking about revenge and, like... I guess if the words are exactly like I should have cheated, yeah, maybe (laughs) Maybe you should skip it. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of times the R&B kind of music genre kind of lends itself to already being promiscuous. So then on top of that, it's like kind of wild. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I probably would have, yeah, made a joke, skip it. I just feel like... (laughs) I think this is part of the reason why I don't play music at sessions because like a lot of people say that they do, but it's just like, I don't know. I just feel like it's an extra added element of stress and like, I don't know, like if you, like you obviously have to have Spotify premium to do something like that. Like, yeah. What if a song pops up that you don't like? What if like the like playlist just isn't hitting? Like, what do you do? Because you're already playing music at that point. So you have to keep music going. And I think one of the biggest things too is when you are in the process of trying to help 
your clients feel comfortable. I think music is such a, a like a vastly diverse thing for people that it's got to be really tough to actually play music that can make everybody feel comfortable because you're going to run into different people that have different music tastes. So how do you as the photographer find music that's in the middle enough to yeah. not like make people feel weird when they're shooting? Because yeah. I feel like if if they're like, I don't know, we don't we haven't had a lot of experience with different people playing music, but. I I personally would be a, a an individual that could be thrown off pretty quickly if the wrong music was playing during the shoot. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to not block your face with your or the mic with your face, but because everyone wants to see your face. Got to see the pearly whites. Yes, and the mustache. That's really why most people are here is for the mustache. I just got my teeth cleaned like a week <laughs> and a half ago. So cool, awesome. All right, thank you for that. That's my natural smile. Okay. All right, Charlie. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> he's in some sort of mood today. I don't know. He thinks he thinks he's taking over the podcast. He's giving Just you guys. read the second one. Okay. Back in college, I was photographing a wedding by myself. I got all wait. I got all ready. Okay. <laughs> Why is this? Okay, don't comment. I'm just going to. I got this. I got this. Back in college, I was photographing a wedding by myself. I got all getting ready slash bridal photos Couple photos done before the ceremony. Right after the bride walks down the aisle, the father of the church says, does anyone think these two shouldn't be wed? People look around kind of laughing. A guest stands up and I'm like, this is a bad time to go to the bathroom. Nope. He starts walking toward the bride and groom and says, I do. This guest takes the bride's hand and they leave. As it's all happening, I'm taking photos like no one is going to believe me. It was like a scene from a movie. After it happened, I said, I'm so sorry that it happened to you. That's not right. Is that real? She said that to the groom? I don't know if it's a girl or a guy, but I don't... No, apparently... The, the guy came up and grabbed the, the bride, right? That's what that's what that said? Yeah. A, a guest stood up, yeah, and took the bride's hand, yeah, and walked out. Oh, my word. Yeah. Okay, so... In my head as a photographer, I'm like, oh, this is horrible. I'm like, oh, cool. I get to leave. <laughs> I guess my work here is done. <laughs> I mean, what do you literally what do you do? Also, like, it's just the way that the story ended. I'm like, that's just such a weird way to end the story. Like you just say, oh, it's not right. And that's it. Like, I don't know. I need more closure from the story. I mean, we obviously I don't even, is that even like tradition now? Like, is that still standard for people to offer that moment anymore? I don't think so. I have you ever heard of someone saying like, what is it? Uh, what, what is the wording that they say? Like if anyone like interjects or whatever, speak now or forever, hold your peace. I have no idea. That's more of like a, a like a courtroom. No, speak for now or forever, hold your peace is like, I think what they say when, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay, sure. I, we don't need. To I think they use it in it. the court as well. Like, sure, it could be interchangeable, court or at the altar. But <laughs> at the altar. I, I, I mean, I haven't heard it. It's kind of like, why are we still asking that question? Well, obviously, maybe the bride like set it up. Maybe the bride was like, "Hey, priest, can you make sure you ask if anyone interjects?" <laughs> maybe, maybe this was the plan all along. Is this the same couple that got the R&B song during their engagement session that said I should have cheated? It very well could be the same couple. It very well could have been foreshadowing to this the wedding day. Yeah. I mean, did that person cheat, though, or did they literally just dump someone on the spot? It's giving like love is blind. Well, <laughs> you don't like just accept that. You don't just accept the invitation to leave the altar unless you have a previous connection with them. Right. No, obviously, you're not just going to like with a complete stranger walk off into the sunset. True. Maybe it was like an ex that like, you know, they broke up and then the ex showed up. That That's is a just very crazy. sticky situation. And then I'm like, OK, what do you do with the photos? Like, do you deliver any photos like? I don't know. It's so sticky because it's like that's a personal thing and it's not really your business as a photographer, but you have to do your job. You got to deliver. I would deliver half a gallery. 
I guess. <laughs> I don't know how you would want to deliver that any portion of that after maybe you like, like photoshop the groom out of all the photos let's get into our bride. next one <laughs> i don't want to keep talking about it because it makes me so sad to think about that <laughs> groom that was standing up there maybe there's a good reason for it why the bride had to leave but who knows all right so this next uh story has a little preface to it from the person who submitted it this is real vulnerability <laughs> i put myself on blast for this one but anyway I was doing a shoot for the sweetest couple ever. Ideal clients, ideal location. The sun was shining. Everything was perfect. The shoot was going so well when I got the IBS rumble. The IBS rumble. (laughs) Yes, Miss Girl. (laughs) The poops were upon me. Like, has this ever happened to anyone else? And it was the full-on experience. I started sweating and getting the feeling I was literally going to crap my pants. As, as my brain was panicking and trying to determine if I was actually going to have to leave this shoot, my couple was so confused because I was not speaking. I tried posing them in one last pose before I made the decision I had to cave. This is my worst nightmare. I ended up pausing the shoot and telling them I had to pee so bad. <laughs> Anything to save my pride. And they were so, so, so kind about it. They said, take all the time I needed. But mind you, we were in the middle of a huge park slash trail, so I legit was sprinting to my car. There were no bathrooms in the park, so I had to speed to the nearest grocery store to blow up the bathroom. (laughs) I returned a good chunk of time later, and we finished the rest of the session. Like I said, they were so understanding, and this is and was my nightmare come true. I'm sure they knew I was literally pooping my pants, but they were so sweet for not even mentioning it. So, so, so embarrassing. The pics turned out amazing, though, and they asked me to shoot their wedding afterwards, lol. So, vulnerability for the win. Side note, I love you and your podcast so much. You are an inspiration to this community, and your voice is needed. Wow. That is a crazy story. I just love whoever wrote that. I just love the writing behind that. I just feel like everyone like, you know, really just drew you in the story. Um, That's literally crazy. I feel like if anyone says to you like, hey, it's an emergency. I have to go use the bathroom. Like no questions asked. You just let that person go do their thing. I'm glad that that person even made it to a bathroom. You know, like driving to a grocery store is crazy. That is so far. That's some pretty good uh, bodily discipline for a person with irritable irritable bowel syndrome. True. Truly, truly, truly. That is crazy. Honestly, that is probably like a hidden fear that I didn't even realize I had. But I do feel like sometimes when you're shooting, like, I don't know, like on a wedding day, I can go all day without using the bathroom at all. Because I'm just like so like locked in on adrenaline, you know what I mean? Like I'm so just focused that I really don't even like have to use the bathroom all day. And then like at the very end, I'm like, oh my gosh, I needed to go all day and I didn't even realize because you're just so like focused in. I was going to say your focus kind of is like an override sometimes in yes. th- those settings. But also I don't have IBS, so I'm sure if someone does have IBS, it's a little bit different. It's oh, for like sure. you got to just go. Oh, that is literally crazy. Okay. Um, this next one is from Melina. I photographed a handball game last Friday, got hit by a ball directly in my lens and pushed back the camera into my eyebrow. I had to get two stitches and have a pretty bad bruise all around my eye. Oh my word. That's exactly like what I would be afraid of. Okay, wait, push the camera right back into your eyebrow. Yeah. Like I saw was it? Oh no. It was in these stories that someone said they, we're shooting an NFL game and like it literally like they got hit in the face with a puck or something. Did, was that an NHL game? Yeah. Yeah. yeah not yeah. NFL. So a hockey game in the little, the little slide out they were dealing with that and didn't a puck or something. I go think right so. Through the slide out and yeah. They yeah. Hit. Yeah. That's crazy. It's just like the chances of something like that happening are crazy. I'm j- I just want to like also was the lens. Okay. Like I'm glad the photographer's okay, but did the lens shatter? Um, I, okay. So this is kind of niche and I am, sometimes I get streams of handball content on my what? social media. Is that not like a f- 
just a funny name for like baseball? No, it's a legitimate Olympic sport. It's its own thing. And it's a little bit more like international than a U.S. based game. Um, uh, it's kind of a weird combination of like ultimate meets soccer meets football. But you're playing like with a, a shrunk soccer ball that has all this nasty like stick them or tar on it for grip. And then they literally treat it like ultimate and they throw this thing around the gym until they can get to kind of in, like in lacrosse where they have like a like a crease that you can't go in. And then you have to like throw from outside of that and try to get it in the goal. So that was what I was actually going to ask as I was thinking about that. Did your lens have nastiness all over it? Because I've seen some videos of the amount of like tack that they literally put on those balls. And it is disgusting to see how they clean those handballs after games. I'm sure the lens had quite a bit of damage. Just but like if it's not film. like if it's like a soccer ball feel, I bet the lens ended up being fine. If it was like a baseball, I could be like, OK, the lens might have like cracked or something. Yeah. I mean, regardless, she still got or he or she got. Oh, no, Melina. So a girl, I don't know. I don't know what you, who you are. <laughs> Just keep going. Regardless, all I'm saying is getting whacked in the face like that. It just is so painful. And yeah. the viewfinder basically being jammed down your eye socket. Yeah, it's crazy. OK, I'm actually going to read the next one, too. Hi, Cassidy. I've been listening to your podcast for over a year now, and it's been so helpful and entertaining. Thank you for doing what you do. Oh, you're welcome. So I ruined a su- <laughs> so I ruined a surprise proposal. I got an inquiry from a bride. She lived out of state and told me in the inquiry form that her her and her partner were coming into town to tour their potential wedding venue and put a deposit down. Their wedding was over a year away. I chatted with her about booking and she said she would sign my contract right after they decided on their proposal. Everything was going great. A few days later, I get get an inquiry for engagement photos from who I thought was her fiance. My first thought was that they were both reaching out to photographers and they wanted to do engagement photos while they were in town looking at venues. I thought that both of them had reached out to me and didn't know the other had also reached out to me. I reached out to the bride and told her that her fiance had inquired about engagement photos. She emailed me back saying that he was actually inquiring about proposal photos and that it was supposed to be a surprise. She said she wasn't upset that I told her and she wanted to keep it a surprise. She told me not to tell him that I accidentally told her. I respected her wishes and I didn't tell him. I photographed their proposal. It was beautiful. He thought that she was surprised and I'm still photographing their wedding next year. Needless to say, I will remember that some men don't know the difference between engagement photos and a proposal and I will always clarify what they mean in the future. I'll be real. That's a mistake that I definitely could make myself (laughs) the difference between a proposal and engagement engagement photos photos. that is so true though i feel like i'll get inquiries for engagement photos but they actually want like a proposal but like they just don't know because like it's like oh you're getting engaged so those are engagement photos in like your head oh and a thousand percent the more that we talk about this the more that i didn't even realize there was a difference yeah there definitely is a difference yeah, that's and I think pricing pricing too is different for proposals and engagements, at least for me, because like a proposal, you don't always take as many photos, but it's like, you know, you're there for a long time. Yeah, sometimes you're just like waiting or something. Yeah. So it's just yeah, the other completely different sessions. It's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny that like the photographer went and then reached out to the girl and was like, hey, he reached out to me. <laughs> Oh, that is horrible. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. But I mean, at least the couple seemed like they're champs and kind of just rolled with it in stride. The girl still like was able to kind of act it out and fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. I feel like part of part of this honestly is on the guy a little bit, because if he didn't like say like you can't tell my like I guess at the time it would be girlfriend not they're not like fiance yet like if he didn't specify not to tell her I would assume that the two of them 
like talked about the fact that she was reaching out to wedding photographers. So he should know that she's talking to photographers. So he should really like, he should have really just been like, it's a surprise. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. That's so tricky. I'm glad that they just like acted like she was surprised and just moved on with it. At the same time, I feel like the photographer also could have, I don't know, maybe she did this and this is why she reached out to the, the fiance then was I would have, I, I hope they would have reached out to the the man first, trying to follow up on the session. Oh, before just and going then to the just girl. Automatically going to the yeah, girl. Yeah, I mean like he he, he your fiance like reached out to me instead like going to the guy and like communicating with him first. So yes, the guy may have had a little bit of naivete and not knowing everything that he should have known, but is that a word? Yes. Naivete. Naive. Naivete. Yes. I thought it was Don't like. Don't get stuck n- on that. <laughs> it's okay. Let's keep it going. Um, so the guy could have been a little naive. There you go. Thank you. Welcome. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, I hope the photographer actually followed up with him first before just directly going to the girl. So I could see how it could yeah. be a mix up on both sides. What would you do if like you proposed to me and you found out that I knew the whole time that you were proposing, like I knew all of it. Would you be, and I didn't tell you, like I just like acted surprised. I would be bummed. I'm obviously still really excited because I mean, hopefully at that point the engagement is still going Mm -hmm. like you accepted the engagement, but um, I definitely would have been bummed. Okay. I also, when I proposed to Cassidy, I thought she knew because I had like lost my wallet and needed help like looking for it. And she went through my bag over the weekend that I was going to propose. So I like in my proposal speech was like, hey, I'm sure you saw this ring in my bag when you're helping me look for my wallet. So this may not even be a surprise to you, but blah, 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 blah. You're yeah. the love of my life. I want to spend <laughs> the rest of our days together. Will you marry me? Yeah. I, and she was like, I never saw it. Yeah, I didn't see the ring. But I knew, I thought I knew you were going to propose because you were just acting so fishy. And you carried around your backpack all day through New York City. And it was like, I was like, why are you carrying your backpack? Like, we're literally walking around New York City all day. Like, why do you need your backpack? What are you going to do? Stop and work on your laptop? So I just had a feeling but yeah, I didn't ever see the ring or anything. I was like 50% surprised. It was like, I kind of felt like you were going to do it that day, but I didn't know the timing of it. Like I didn't know when. So, so my timing got thrown off too because of the context, but this is not about us. This is yeah, about other people's horror about stories. Us. <laughs> not my own horror story of thinking I gave away my own proposal. <laughs> All right. You got it. Here's the next one. Hi guys, it's Cassidy, and I'm gonna show you the fastest way to edit your photos. I like to use AI in my workflow to speed up my editing and culling process, and that's why I use Aftershoot. Let me show you how I do it. So first, I'm gonna go into Aftershoot, and I'm gonna create a new album. Then I'm gonna choose the raw JPEG option, and I'm gonna locate my raws. You'll notice that in Aftershoot, I can very easily switch between the cull and edit tab, and it just makes for an overall seamless experience. Now I'm gonna switch to the cull tab, and I'm gonna have Aftershoot cull my photos with AI automated culling. And once I hit the cull button, Aftershoot's actually gonna give me the option between AI automated culling and AI assisted culling. Today, I'm gonna use the AI automated culling. Then Aftershoot's gonna ask me what type of shoot this is. I'm going to say that it is an engagement shoot. And I actually wanna be super selective with this specific gallery. So I'm gonna have Aftershoot only select a few amount of photos for me. And then I'm gonna hit the start culling button and Aftershoot is going to work its magic. What I love about Aftershoot is they have a marketplace where they have over 30 pre-built profiles for you to choose from. You can go in and preview any pre-built style in the marketplace and you can use the little sliders to see before and afters on different photos and what it would look like. I'm just gonna go in quickly and review all the photos and make sure that I like all the ones that it's selected. And now that I've reviewed all the photos, I'm gonna export these 92 photos. Now I'm gonna switch over to the edit tab in Aftershoot and I'm going to work on getting my photos 
edited using Aftershoot's AI assisted editing. I do wanna note that I made my own Matcha Glow profile under the AI profile options within Aftershoot. So this is my own personal AI profile that I prefer to use for my editing style. So that is what I'm going to choose when I'm doing the editing portion of this video. It's super easy to make your own customized AI profile in Aftershoot. Or like I said earlier, you can always head on over to the marketplace and check out the options there. So I'm gonna select the matcha glow profile what i love about aftershoe is they just added this new crop feature and they allow you to crop super customized so you can actually choose to crop loose or aggressive and i'm going to choose aggressive in this case and you can also choose a custom ratio if you have a specific cropping ratio that you prefer i'm going to leave mine as default now i'm going to let aftershoe edit the cold images and i'm going to hit edit photos now i'm going to let aftershoe edit my photos for me and i can take a break and come back to see if my photos are ready. Another thing that I love about Aftershoot is they have 24 seven online support. If you ever feel like you need help with something, you have a technical issue, you can hop right onto the Aftershoot app, go to their online support section and get help there. The best part about Aftershoot is it takes minutes. It hardly takes any time for all of my photos to get edited. I think in total for these 92 photos that I edited with Aftershoot, it took a total of maybe two minutes to cull and edit my photos. And now I can go in Aftershoot and just review all the different edits that it made to all of my images. I exported my photos from Aftershoot right into Lightroom Classic and I can just go in and review my edits here. Honestly, Aftershoot did a great job editing all my photos. They're exactly how I would have edited them. So I'm super happy with how this gallery turned out. Aftershoot allows you to seamlessly edit your raw photos right within Aftershoot. This allows you to expand your editing capabilities beyond Lightroom catalogs or Capture One sessions. Now you can export edited images to Bridge, Photoshop, and Lightroom Cloud. What I love about this is it makes the process so seamless going between Aftershoot and your editing platform. All the more reason to check out Aftershoot and try it today. Aftershoot is seriously a game changer when it comes to editing and culling your photos. If you want to take your editing time from hours to minutes, try Aftershoot for yourself at the link in the description. Aftershoot is also offering a free 30 day trial for all Oshoot listeners. So guys, make sure to check out the link in the description of this episode. I promise you Aftershoot is going to change your editing game. Thank you so much for watching and let's get back to the show from Jeanette for my very first wedding a mentor asked me to help him for a small wedding because he had double booked it turned out to be a 200 plus guest wedding and a whole 12 hours no one knew who I was and it was super awkward from the start needless to say it was horrible and super stressful worst part was that he paid me 300 bucks for it and I didn't even get to keep the photos I took. And just so you know, at the very beginning of this story, the word mentor is in quotation marks. Yeah. So. Jail. Yeah. Trash. A That's horrible. Snake. Yeah. I mean, I could, I could see the photographer not realizing that they're being snaky about it, but at the same time, 12 hours and it said like that they thought it was going to be small but then it was this huge thing absolutely not when you think you're photographing a small wedding the gear that you bring compared to the gear that you need for a big wedding is totally different like well also i mean this is this person it was their first wedding so i'm sure their their gear was not gonna really change a whole lot but okay that's true but i mean that's still, still that's that's baptism by fire yeah basically yeah truly okay this next one's from Mary. I'm a little newer to shooting weddings. And this past summer, I was taking detail shots of the rings, vow books, flowers, etc. I always make sure I give the rings to the best man or whoever needs them because I'm terrified of losing them. So I did this, but then I was being pulled by the groomsmen to take some photos of something. So I quickly ran inside the barn and put the vow books and perfume behind the curtain on the stage thing inside the barn. Don't ask why I decided that was a good spot, but I didn't want any of it to get stolen. And I thought the vow books were props for the photos. Well, in the middle of the ceremony that was outside about a hundred feet from the barn and it was time for the bride and groom to read their vows. The groom looks at his best man to ask him for the vow books and the best man checks his pockets and says that he doesn't have them. So then everyone is kind of looking around and whispering about where they might be. After a couple of minutes, it finally clicks in my head that my... <laughs> 
dumb self put them behind the curtain in the barn. I quickly find the day of coordinator and whisper to her exactly where they are so she can go grab the books. She goes running into the barn and after a couple minutes, she comes out with her hands in the air, screaming that she can't find them. So now I decide to go running into the barn and get the vow books myself and come outside running towards the ceremony with everyone watching me. The day of coordinator takes them from me and gives the books to the bride and groom and they can finally read their vows to each other. Long story short, it was the most embarrassing five minutes ever and I will never, ever forget to give the vow books back to someone important, even if they think they're props, which in this case, they definitely were not props, lol. (laughs) Okay. Sometimes when I do detail photos and someone gives me vow books, I like open them up. Like I don't read them, but I open them just to see if they actually use them. And most of the time they do. Sometimes they don't, but I feel like when a bride gives me the vow books, like she'll literally be like, Oh, these are just for the photos, you know? But also I don't like, yes, you took them for photos, I don't necessarily think it's your job to make sure that the best man has them before the ceremony. Like, yes, you hid them unintentionally, but there should have been at some point before the ceremony where the best man should have come out or like, you know, the coordinator should have checked with him or someone and, or he literally just realized, Oh, I need the vow books. Like at what point was that? like skipped over, you know? So I think there's like, you know, there's checks and balances, but there definitely was some layer that was missed before the ceremony, not just you taking the photos. Like I will say that was probably majority your fault. Definitely. (laughs) (laughs) But like also it could have been prevented by people just like checking and making sure like vow books are a big deal. Those are equally as important as the rings because that's like part of the ceremony. So, like, if you don't have them, like, you you got to go find them. <laughs> yeah, know. for sure. I think just doubling back, having someone like the coordinator, like, making a pre-ceremony check, like, hey, <laughs> we need these. Where are they? Right. Do you have them? And that could have been solved in a very simple way. Right. And, like, it's not your job to even make sure that check happens. So, it's like, I don't know. Just, I have mixed feelings about it, but it's also so funny. Like I just picturing this photographer, like coming outside with the vow books and like everyone, like just knowing that it was like the photographer, like move them. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's, that's the worst. I mean, photographers and having the most important items of the ceremony kind of goes hand in hand. So. Yes. We do get a lot of horror stories about those items. Yes. <laughs> All right. You've got the next one. I, this one might be a little bit longer, so is it? Yeah. I th- yeah, I think it is. Okay. And my phone is also about to die, so hopefully I can get to the end oh, of it before it does. It sounds like you're not a great host if you didn't even have your phone charged Listen for the episode. We have been doing quite a lot today, so give me a break. Like prepping? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That was so funny. You just had to laugh at me. All right. You ready? Ready. Okay. Go for it. I wish I never had to write a photographer horror story, but here I am. I was photographing a wedding and the guests were drinking. The father of the bride was pouring vodka shots into everyone's mouth. He was carrying a big vodka bottle. So as you can imagine, he was drunk. The party was lit and everything was good until I got on the ground for a shot because why not? The circle was popping and I had a million of the same shot from behind the circle. Anywho, the father of the bride steps over me to straddle me, so I'll take his picture, and I had nowhere to go. (laughs) The pure horror on my face as I couldn't even get up until he moved was evident. The bride could tell I was uncomfortable and pushed him away so I could get up. He wasn't pinning me down to clarify. He was far away, just his feet were on either side of me, and he was looking down at me, and I will never, ever get on the ground for a (laughs) shot again. Anyway, I stayed until it was time for me to leave, but I wanted to leave so bad after that happened. <laughs> yes, I would say that is a great takeaway that Don't you should not be getting on We're the floor. We're not getting on the floor. Especially 
dance floors on the no, ground. No, imagine like someone could literally step on you. You definitely uh, the fact that your like equipment wasn't trampled. Right. As well. Yeah. And if everyone's if they're pouring vodka shots like they're talking about, you cannot trust the balance of any of those people around I was you. Just saying, if someone trips and gets injured over you as well, you potentially you could, could be, have a lawsuit on your hands yeah. too. So you try to think twice next We're time. We're not getting down on the ground. And honestly, <laughs> here's the thing though. Like when you are in the middle of a reception and dancing's happening. You're just like, I already have 500,000 of the same image. Let me try a new angle. So I get that. Like, I, I understand the creativity behind it. Let's talk about the dad standing over her, because that's really what happened. It's just like, it's giving like you're not, like, no spatial awareness or, like, social cues of, like, I, okay, it's fun to think of someone taking a photo of you from, like, down below. Like, that's a fun, you know, angle, whatever. But then it's like, okay, maybe don't like trap her. Maybe like, you know, stand like next to the photographer and just like lean over the lens or something like that. I don't know. Like, no, for sure, for sure. It's for sure. just <laughs> like weird. It's weird. But I'm glad the bride saw that you were just like, I don't even know what to do right now because you don't want to like insult the parent. You know, you don't want to like be rude. But at the same time, you're like, move. <laughs> yeah, the hard thing is too if they're inebriated, it's like hard to tell how they would react in that situation. Oh, right. Too. So yeah, that's very bad. Yeah, pretty pretty bad altogether. Yeah. Glad that nothing serious happened. Mm-hmm. Okay, this one actually is a long one. This one's from Nancy. This was a wedding day for one of my couples, and as always, I arrived earlier than usual to set up my gear. Got my shots and told the bride that I would meet her at the ceremony. I had to stop by and get batteries because my batteries for my flash had died and I needed them for the reception. So I stopped by at a nearby CVS. I got my batteries and I was on my way back to the car. I went to turn on the car and it would not turn on. And right then and there, I started panicking because I needed to be at the ceremony within the next 20 minutes. Of course, I wasn't near home to have someone help me real quick. So two gentlemen tried to help me turn on the car by charging my battery. When they placed the jumper cables on, they put it on backwards. I know. And I knew for sure after that, I was not going to start the car back up. The wedding planner texted me to see where I was because the ceremony is starting within the next 10 minutes. And I was still stuck at the CVS with my car. It was so bad. I called my husband to see if he could help me because I didn't know what to do. He told me to take an Uber and that he'll take and that'll take care of it. The Uber driver got there and I was 10 to 15 minutes late to the ceremony and I felt so horrible, but there really wasn't much else that I could do. Luckily though, the bride was laughing and drinking with her bridesmaids. When I got there, she didn't say anything, nor did I. My husband ended up getting the car towed back home, had to pick me up from the wedding like a high schooler after their shift, LOL. <laughs> Anyways, I got a new car months after, and I'm traumatized for the rest of my life. That is very traumatizing. Have you ever seen what happens when they put jumper cables on a battery backwards? No, but I'd assume the car blows up. Well, literally, I've seen videos of the jumper cables melting oh my because of the reverse current and it causes so much heat that it like fuses the cables but the rubber coating was literally dripping off of the jumper cables that's crazy i know i've never seen that before but imagine like you're panicking you're like i have to get to this wedding and then like you start to see literally the jumper cables like melting you're yeah like, oh, what cool. happens do you blame it on those guys for trying to help you yeah don't help me if you're inexperienced. <laughs> don't help me if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, get out of town. And if you have no idea what you're doing, step off. Don't help me. Don't help me. I need helpful people to help me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I mean, I, they had the best intentions, but they also wrecked your car. Yeah. Not wrecked your car, but they burnt your battery. Yeah, yeah. That's just crazy. And like... It's honestly like kind of crazy that you were just late to the ceremony. It was like, oh, whatever. Like, I think that's like definitely a blessing in disguise because there are some like bridezillas that would not be happy with you being late. But I feel like a majority of people would be understanding over something like that. Like literally, that's just a common theme with these stories. Like there's nothing you can do. 
I don't know. Yeah, some stuff that's just outside of your control. I yeah. mean, the car battery giving out on you, that's really tough. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next story because I think we've got some long ones at the end. So I want to make sure we can read all of them. This next one is from Rachel. I was freshly postpartum and doing a set of flower minis. I was unloading my things when I shut my trunk and then I realized I had left my keys, my phone, and my camera inside. I panicked and flagged down a car to call my husband to bring me his set of keys so I could quickly gather myself. I started full out panicking when I saw my clients had arrived early. A grandmother, daughter, and a granddaughter. I walked over to them and explained to the grandmother my situation, as she was the one who had hired me. I was so nervous that I would be met with disappointment and probably anger. Instead, she hugged me and told me accidents happen. You just had a baby, which is chaotic on its own. We're in no rush. I was rescued with the extra set of keys, and we began our session a little later than we should have, but it was beautiful nonetheless. Laura, the grandmother's daughter, reached out to me recently, expressing that her mom had passed away and wondered if I could give her a link to the photos. I will forever be grateful for Laura's compassion for a situation that started so horribly. Aw, that's so nice. Be nice to people. Compassion. Yeah. Wow, that's a sweet story. Kind of sucks that, you know, the trunk thing happened, but, you know, sweet. Yeah, you will probably carry that memory of Laura's just compassion and kindness and patience with you in a moment of vulnerability and just willing to kind of take it in stride and be gracious. And now you even provided those uh, lifelong memories for them in the form of the photos, too. So that's pretty precious. Mm -hmm. This next one is from Isabel. I was Okay, <laughs> sometimes like the I just get caught up on specific words in these stories. Okay. I was um, getting ready for a wedding with a couple I had never met in person before. When I arrived, the bride was already crying because none of her family or friends came to the wedding because they didn't like the groom. She wanted to cancel everything. I was really struggling to talk to her and talk her into not canceling it. So finally, she agreed to get married. (laughs) That is wild. (laughs) When the groom came, I finally found out the real reason why the family didn't come. He was 55 and she was 18. Oh. They got together six years before. I don't mind age difference, but that is kind of illegal. Since then, I'm always asking for the birth year of both of them in my questionnaire, Really stressful day for me. I hope you understand everything. I'm from Germany. Best wishes. Yeah, that's definitely a that's very illegal. specific set of circumstances. That's so illegal. Well, I mean, I we can't say that for sure. We don't necessarily know how things work in Germany, but okay, okay, sure, not illegal, but that's just crazy. Yeah. The per- that lit- literally the girl's twelve when they first met, and the guy would have been forty nine. Yeah, yeah that's, that's crazy. Pretty tough. <laughs> that's wild. And it's crazy. Like, you wouldn't even think that you'd have to ask that on your questionnaire. Okay, but go back to the beginning of this. What she, the, the photographer was the one that had to do the convincing to make it happen? Uh, yeah, that's what is crazy about it. Like, you have to, like, talk the bride into getting married. And you talked this bride into this situation. Yeah. I mean, the person that wrote it in is from Germany so the English might be a little confusing but that's what I got of it was that they had to kind of convince the bride yeah I I really hope that we are not uh, misinterpreting the translation yeah. or maybe the way that this was written Yeah, but that's I mean on the front side of it I would hope that you are just trying to be there for a person that is kind of just going through the motions of dealing with a lot of different things and big decisions for what could be the rest of their lives. And so, yeah, you want to be a helpful photographer and give them reassurance that this is the right decision, that you'd be really excited to help them in this process, which is usually 
a very helpful, kind, and sweet thing to do. But in this circumstance, I mean, obviously, this is their their couple. They make their own decisions. But when you find out afterwards that it was a 55-year-old and an 18-year-old, that then kind of changes the way that you would view yeah. persuading her into that. Mm-hmm. Well, whether or not that is actually what happened. So. Yeah. We apologize if we are misinterpreting uh, the way that this was described. But that is a pretty crazy set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have the next story. Is that that one right there? Yeah. Hey, Cassidy. I have some seriously embarrassing moments all from my first wedding of the year. I was so excited for this wedding. It was a sunny January day with snow on the ground, and the bride was getting ready at a literal mansion. Of course, I have my most embarrassing moment that I've ever had as a photographer right at the start of the day. Now, I had never met the bride in person, only over Zoom once. So when the girls walked into the house from getting hair and makeup done at a salon, the girl who approached me to ask if I needed anything, I have no clue why, but I was sure she was the maid of honor. Sorry, I might have missed something in there, but... No, that, that makes sense. Make, make much sense to me. Yeah. After asking a ton of questions like, does the bride have a veil? Does she want detail shots of the shoes? And does she have her engagement ring? This girl finally says, I am she. I'm the bride. <laughs> Trust me, the hair, the makeup. She looked so different. I never would have recognized her. Fortunately, she had a great sense of humor and we all laughed it off, but I wanted to die and crawl in a hole. Then, literally the same wedding, I'm standing at the front of the aisle, aka the cringiest moment of a whole wedding day, waiting for the ceremony to start when a lady several rows back waves me over. She says, hey, I didn't want to embarrass you, but your zipper's down. (laughs) So anyway, a highly embarrassing wedding. But I was so excited about the perfect snowy pics that I wasn't going to let those get to me. Oh, and then I shared that ceremony story on an unscripted post and literally got featured for having my zipper down. So that's great. (laughs) That's so funny. Like just being like, hey, does the bride want this? And the bride's like, what do you mean? I'm literally the bride. Right here. (laughs) Yeah. Hello. (laughs) <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Do you feel like I have a different voice when I read the stories? Like, do you feel like I talk differently? Are you asking this question because you think I have a different voice when I read? Yeah. You like, you're more animated when you read the stories. Like you're, you like do like a, it's almost like a, like you're reading like a children's book to me. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to make it childish, but I am trying to do my best to, inflect tone of voice of the way these people wrote it gotcha it's just like different because that's not how you normally talk exactly okay just want to make sure it's on purpose it's not my tone of voice i'm trying to replicate their tone of voice okay gotcha okay so this next one is anonymous hi cassidy i'm a huge fan of yours and love your work here's my story I was once doing Christmas minis. These minis are 15 minutes long and back to back. I had no breaks in between. Everything was going great when all of a sudden two clients arrived at the same time. One of the clients was a family of four and the other was a big family of 10 people. Both moms approached me and I was left speechless wondering how on earth I could possibly have made this mistake of booking two clients for the same time. I tried to ask the mom with the family of 10 if I could by chance reschedule her and refund her. I kid you not, she yelled at me in front of her family of 10 plus the other family of four saying stuff like, no, you need to take me. (laughs) No, you need to take me now. I paid you and I'm not leaving without my photos. I don't care what you need to do. Take my photos now. When I say yelling, I'm not exaggerating. At this point, I'm shaking and tearing up. I go to the side to make a quick call to one of my clients who's a repeat client and was scheduled to see me in 15 minutes. And I asked her if she'd be willing to reschedule and she was already on her way, but she agreed. And I told the mean lady that I'll take her in 15 minutes. 
<laughs> the mean lady. <laughs> the mean lady. <laughs> While I did the family of four's photos, who, mind you, were extremely empathetic and understanding, I tried to get back in focus and try for tried to forget what just happened before I did the mean lady's photos. Once it was their turn, they acted like nothing happened and was smiling and laughing like she didn't just yell at me. I understand I was wrong. I understand she paid. I understand it was a huge mistake on my end. But there is a way of going about it and a way of talking to people. Lesson learned, though, always double check your bookings and stay organized. And this person asked, like, what would I do if that happened to me? Oh, and honestly, I do not even know. Like, I would probably be tearing up and I would probably be shaking as well because I'm fragile. And also, like, I feel like that's just, like, being a nice person is just not talking to people like that, period. Even if, like, they completely you're entitled to something and they completely ignore that like i don't know you just can't yelling at someone is crazy i don't like yelling at people yeah i mean they're the only time that that's ever appropriate is if someone has done something that is like legitimately unacceptable right yeah then there's a time and place where maybe some frustration or anger needs to be com- communicated clearly that you are being foolish in what's going on. But yeah. It, it, that was not at all the situation. No. So that is completely out of left field and wrong of that. Yeah. The, those, those people. Yeah. I probably would have done the same thing, just like tried to move on from it and make the best of it. Honestly, if someone talked to me, to me like that, I would literally be like, you get a refund and like, I'm not taking your photos. <laughs> I say that like, right now but honestly in the moment i don't know if i would do that but that is like what my gut tells me to do you know but i don't know okay you've got a long one ahead so i'm gonna sit back relax be a co-host take it in take it in not even a co-host you're a guest i'm sorry just be a peasant over here no uh, a star guest cherished guest I attended a content day last year and met this sweet photographer who lives out of state. She seemed so nice and friendly and was always encouraging everyone throughout the day. Fast forward a few weeks and she had put on her story that she was looking for a second shooter for an upcoming wedding that happened to be at one of my bucket list locations. I immediately reached out and told her that I would love to work with her. She responded fairly quickly and told me how excited she was to work with me and that she really liked my work. She gave me all the information for the wedding, addresses, a basic schedule, and what she would be paying me. And she was going to be paying me a lot. <clears throat> Sorry, I have to do that. I got some like junk in my throat. Okay. Um, I told her everything looked great to me, and she responded saying she'd send out the contract the next day. Later that evening, she asked me what gear I shot on, and I listed off what lenses, flashes, and camera bodies I owned. She never responded to that message, which I didn't really think anything of. The next day, no contract. I waited until the next evening before I nudged her. I was thinking she had possibly gotten my email wrong, so I gave her a different email address and told her just let me know when she had sent the email in case it would end up in my junk inbox. She never responded to that message either. All I got was red notification a couple days after I sent it. Now, I'm the type of person who gives like fifth chances. I knew she had a lot going on in her personal life and she was about to leave the country. So I just assumed that she was crazy busy and didn't bother her. Fast forward a few days and I see on her story that she's back in the country. I want to make sure that she actually responds to my message this time. So I decide to wait until I see her being active on social media before reaching out. This time I ask another photographer, a very good friend of mine about what to say. I didn't want to be pushy or annoying, but also I needed to be sure that she still wanted me to work with her. I had completely blocked off that wedding day and was even turning around, turning down clients saying I was booked that day. So I typed out a gentle message reminding her about the contract and asking if she still wanted to work with me. A few minutes later, she read it and never responded. To this day, I have no idea what happened. I was never rude or unkind to her from what it sounded like. She never had a problem with me or my shooting style. She even shoots with the same brand of camera, so I know that 
that couldn't have been the problem. I've asked other photographers about this situation and they also think it was so weird. Like if you have a problem with me or happen to change your mind about me working with you, please just say something. P.S. <laughs> WWCD. What would Cassidy do in this situation? How would you avoid something like this in the future? Um, I don't know if you can avoid it. I think that some people handle things differently. It sounds like you're the type of person that really appreciates open communication. Like you can tell someone if like you don't want to work together, if you're not a good fit. Some people are not like that. And some people really have a hard time addressing things. If it's like, if they're afraid that maybe you might react a certain way or like they're just afraid to tell you no. So, and like, especially after they already like said that they're going to work with you, like at that point, they're kind, they've kind of already dug themselves a hole because they've already outlined everything, told you everything, like been like, oh yeah, I want to use you. And then all of a sudden they don't for whatever reason, like that, that's a hard thing to tell someone. Um, my thought is maybe that they just had someone else that they normally use or someone else that like became available and then they just used them and, you know, didn't tell you. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, why people read messages and don't respond after you, you know, re- send reminder, reminder, reminder. I don't know. I, that is unhuman like behavior. <laughs> like at that, at that point, like that they're intentionally ignoring you and that's crazy. Like literally for what? Like you were going to help them. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's, I don't know. I can kind of see like both sides of it because I also like just a little confession. I, am someone who has had to work really hard on being more intentional about getting back to people through text messages. Yeah, you're bad. And I, for a long time, was really bad at getting back to people. But it was never out of an intentional avoidance or anything. I just seriously was like so caught up in being one track minded and whatever I was doing. Even for like entire seasons of time, it would take me like, a long time to realize like, Hey, this was not cool. Like I had somebody that was trying to reach out to me and wanted to talk or connect on something. And I just literally left them hanging for a long time. And it wasn't because I was avoiding this person. It wasn't because I didn't like them or anything. It wasn't like, yeah. I just, it's just like a procrastinating thing sometimes. Yeah. You sometimes you just get caught up in one thing and you let other stuff sit on the back burner so long that you just don't get back to it. Yeah. Um, and it's not cool. It's something that I've had to work on. And maybe that's just where this person was at. Um, yeah. But at the same time, the other piece is like, I mean, there never really was like a formal contract or anything that had been agreed upon. So in that sense, like there wasn't really any legal reason that, that person needed to follow up with you. But just from the standpoint of being kind and not being a jerk about it. Yeah. That's where it would have been cool to see some kind of follow up. Like you said, even just to say like, hey, I ended up going a different direction just for this blah, blah, blah. Um, hope you're doing well. Mm-hmm. Best of luck to you and your work, whatever. Yeah. So, OK, I have one last story. <laughs> so my photography horror story happened what feels like a million years ago at this point, but I still feel triggered by it when I tell the story to this day. I was photographing a wedding in a cafe. Catholic church. I know churches have specific rules sometimes. So I found one of the priests before the ceremony to ask where I could stand. If there were any specific rules I needed to follow. The priest was very kind and stated I could stand anywhere behind a certain point, but beyond that I could do whatever I needed to do. Back then I was using flash photography for ceremonies inside churches. And during the ceremony, I was snapping away flash included following the rules that were given to me by the priest I had spoken to. During the ceremony, I did notice that there ended up being three different priests doing a variety of jobs throughout the ceremony. And this is an important note for the next part of the story. After the ceremony ended, I was waiting in the lobby of the church while we were in between doing photos with the bride and the groom. One of the other priests that presided over the ceremony came up to me and very kindly asked, do you have a business card? To which I said, yes, they're in my bag over here. Let me go grab you some. I went and got the business cards, came back to find the priest. And once I found him, I said, hey, here are those business cards that you were asking for. 
He looked at me with a smile on his face, which quickly dissipated into a scowl as he angrily said, great. Now I can let everyone know that you are never allowed in this church again or any church in this region ever again. It was embarrassing having you use the flash photography throughout the ceremony, including during communion. It's a disgrace to the church and you will never set foot in here again. He went on to berate me as I stood there paralyzed like a deer in headlights. Meanwhile, I could see the other priests who had initially gone over the rules with me and he was standing nearby. I might note that he didn't say anything at all while, while I was being yelled at by his colleague. After the rude priest was done laying into me, I exited the building, but not long after the initial priest stopped me and said, you didn't do anything wrong. You did everything that I told you to do. He shouldn't have spoken to you that way. I thanked him and I went outside and cried. <laughs> After I settled down, I made the decision not to tell the bride and groom what had transpired un transpired until after um, until another time. I continued photographing the day as if nothing happened and never ended up telling the couple what happened. Many months later, I received a phone call from the bride because she just found out what had transpired between myself and the priest who had yelled at me after the ceremony. She apologized profusely and thanked me for my help on the day and it didn't affect their day whatsoever. And she was beyond embarrassed and tried her best to let me know that she doesn't agree at all with the manner that I was treated. As I'm writing this, I can feel the trauma surging through my body because it was such a horrific moment for me, not only in my career, but in my life, having someone speak to me that way, the way that that pre spoke to me has never been okay. And I have since learned how to communicate my boundaries and will never allow someone to speak to me that way again. That's so tough. It's crazy. I'm, I'm sorry. You had to go through that. Yeah. We've had some pretty interesting encounters in churches that would be a lot more formal settings than just like a regular kind of evangelical or more, more modern church. Um, places like a Catholic church or even yeah. like a Greek Orthodox or different, yes. different stuff. Usually those places have like specific, like this photographer said places you can stand and can't stand there. It's just so unfortunate th that there was a miscommunication between people. And it's funny because this happens where like one person has rules. Like there was one Catholic church I shot at where there was a rule of like where I could stand, like the coordinator, like the lady that was kind of like running the, she was like from the church running the ceremony that day had been very specific on where I could and couldn't stand. And then literally the bride says to me, you can go wherever you want. Like, I want you to ignore what they said. And so it's like, what do you do? Yeah. It puts you in a really tough position as the photographer when you get conflicting information from different parties. Yeah. And it's like, you want to still be able to get good photos. Like there's this whole thing. Do you remember when we shot at that Greek Orthodox church and that uncle was up on the stage, like literally standing like behind the bridal party videoing the whole time. Yeah. We had a family member that basically let themselves up on the stage with these priests that were basically officiating the entire time. But some of the priests in this Greek Orthodox ceremony were performing different rites or maybe rituals off to the side in different parts of the stage. And this uncle was like, quite literally weaving in between them yeah. and going through the stage. He was with like his camera. in the mix of all of it. And th literally the bride's face, like she was trying so hard to get the, this guy's attention. I don't know if it was her uncle. I just said uncle. Yeah. We have no idea who the, yeah. what the actual relation was, but she kept trying to like get him to come off the stage and stuff because it was like, what are you doing? Like you're literally embarrassing yourself. Like you don't need to be, you know, doing this anyway. There's just, yeah, sometimes it's just crazy rules. I'm so sorry that happened. And the, the thing that's really tough about that is because there are different levels of conviction as far as the people who are in the church and involved in running that event or hosting that event. So like the priest, one priest might see it at a certain level of conviction. Like I really feel strongly about people being in certain places within the auditorium as we are conducting the ceremony another priest might be extremely relaxed about it and not have the same level of convictions and be like no like 
have your freedom to go wherever. Like this is a, f- a really open time. We want to be serious about what we're doing, but as far as capturing it, it's not disrespectful for you at all to be up on the stage or something like that. Right. So, it, and that it's so tough because you're going to get different information just based on the way some people even believe about the way you handle yourself in inside of the church. Yeah. So but ultimately that's not like a you problem. Like that should be yeah, figured not out. All. Not at all. It should be figured out by them before. Yeah. They, <laughs> they need to be the ones communicating about that. Ahead right. Of time, for or sure. co- communicating the same thing. Cause they did communicate, but they didn't communicate the same thing. They miscommunicated. Yeah. Okay, guys, that's going to wrap up our photography horror stories episode. I hope you guys loved this episode. I have literally like, I think 60 more submissions. I only went through like half of them. So we could literally do another episode in the next couple of weeks if we want to. Um, so you might see us again doing another episode going through some more of your guys' stories. But um, it was great to be a guest on my own podcast today. Um, host, do you want to take us away with the outro? Yes, it was such an honor to have you on today, Cassidy. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy life and schedule and even flying all the way back from Charleston, South Carolina, just to be here for this episode. We are so thankful for your time. And thank you to the audience for taking time out of your day, your precious moments in time. We know you guys have a lot going on, too. Thank you for joining us, and we look look forward to being with you next time. Yes, have a great rest of your day, everyone.